I want to start off by just who is Reggie Dabbs? And you have a very powerful story. It's powerful. Um, it's powerful. And so I'm going to encourage you to share this link because this 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 story is a life changing story. So Reggie, let's start with with whoever was that whatever's in your heart. But uh, we might as well just get everybody acquainted. I remember being in the first grade, and a teacher would take attendance, and they always say your first name and last name, but my teacher only said Reggie when she got to me, but everybody else had first name and last name. I just had Reggie. After a week of that, and she even had a specific desk for every kid, and she would have your name on your desk. Everybody had two names. I only had one, and I asked her on the, the end of the first week on that Friday, why, why, does, why does, where's my name? And all she said was, I'm so sorry, you don't have a last name. And I never said nothing. I just went to my seat and sat down. But that was the first time I knew I was different. That there's something's different. Something's not, something's not like everybody In else. first grade? First grade. How old were you? I was six. And you knew? Yeah, something's off. But it didn't take long. A week later, we had parent-teacher conference. And all my friends' parents are young, and my parents are old. So I just, I waited till we got in the car after it was over. And I'm like, why y'all old? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. And they literally, when we got home, put me at the kitchen table. And they simply, they, my dad said, there's a plan for your life. And we're going to help you find it. And my mom cried for 10 minutes. And finally, my dad held my mom and said, tell him. And she says, yeah. she said, I'm sorry, I'm old because I'm not your mom. And my dad whispered, I'm not your dad. Then she said, you have a brother. His name's Keith. You have two sisters, Anna and Jeanette. Your mom kept your brother. Your mom kept both your sisters. But your mom said you were a mistake, and she hated the day that you were born. But that's okay. You're with us now. And then she said, are you all right? And I said, I'm fine. I said, I thank you for taking care of me. And I gave her a hug, and I said, I got to go to bed. I got to go to school. And I went to my room, and I cried myself to sleep. How old were you? Six. That's when I was told my story the first time. Six. Okay. They didn't want to keep it from me. So... It's interesting you remember these things. Oh, you remember the pain. Because when I was seven, my dad left me, and I never forgot it. You remember. You remember the pain. Yeah. And for adults who have done this to kids, you know, are you thinking about doing it to a kid? Uh, you're looking at a 60-year-old man who remembers it like it was yesterday. So your kids, even though they're young, they remember. And it'll affect their life one way or another. Ooh. You, that's heavy. I know, and I don't know why we went there so fast, <laughs> but you know, well, that's, it's, it's, people it's, need to hear. They need it, to know. It's your story. It's my story. It's our story. It's our story. That, and God links people together, dude. Yeah, He links people with, you know, the hurt, the, the the pain, but then all of a sudden, the medicine, the Jesus, the hope, the bomb of Gilead, that stuff. He links us together because we make each so other run fast. What, even before we go further, because this is flow a little bit here. There's got to be somebody watching that remembers the pain. And I want you to talk to them. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and I would say it simply like this. You, you cannot change your past, but you can change your future. You can't change what happened yesterday. I hear so many people go, if I only, I should have, yeah. if I could have. But no, 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 no. You are who you are right here, right now. With that pain, with that hurt, with that tragedy, but you have to decide, am I going to try to do it myself or am I going to get help? And the greatest help we have comes from the Lord. I was stuck in my pain till I was 19. So from 7 till 19, I was stuck in my pain. And you know what? A lot of people think they're by themselves. They don't realize that the devil always has something that he's going to hit you with that he thinks is going to knock you down and you'll never get up again. Because he doesn't just hit you with that hurt, that pain, that situation, that event. He'll hit you with it and then he'll lay it by your eyes. So while you're on the ground and you're like, I'm going to get up, when you open your eyes, you see abandonment, yeah. loneliness, sorrow. My yeah. dad left. I have nothing. I'm nobody. Yeah. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. And you stay on the ground. And then the devil, for me, I'm sure, I don't know how yours, but he brought somebody into my life who would tell me that every day. Oh, absolutely. So that that reinforced that pain. They're going to remind nobody you. Nobody loves you. Nobody wants no. you. So so that, that victimhood, um, obviously you broke free. So tell me the journey now. Yeah. You know, a lot of people like see guys like us. Yeah. And they go, oh, wow, well, they made it. 
but they don't understand the struggle to get from point A to B. Jesus. Sometimes A to B turns. You must feel like that song. I will survive. You know. <laughs> Oh man, I, ain't I'm no a mountain. High, ain't no mountain high enough. Hey, All hey, that. You, you should have killed me when you had me. <laughs> That's a sermon. Yeah, yeah. To, tell me, like, now you got struck with this. How, tell me your journey here. From uh, six years old, every night I wake up three o'clock in the morning. I'm a little kid, and all I can hear is my mom saying. Your your mistake, which you never been born. She didn't mean to do it like that, wow. but that's what the devil pulled out and gave to me. Wow. Not that I was in the home of a Christians or none of that. It was just that that seventy years ago, eight, nine, ten years old, eleven, twelve, at thirteen, dude. I was just like, my own mom didn't want me. Wow. So what good am I? Well, and one morning, three a.m., this voice of it scared me so bad. That if I think about it a lot at 60, it scares me again. I couldn't believe that I was there. But it was 3 o'clock in the morning. I had a clock with red numbers. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? And it was 3 double O. And the voice in my head said, nobody cares about you. Nobody loves you. Now I know it was the devil. Now yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Now I know he can't see the future, but he saw those angels trying to protect me. Wow. He didn't see tomorrow, but he saw he's going to have a tomorrow, and i got to stop it right now. Yeah, and I can't explain it. But it's almost like when there's something on somebody's life that's going to impact a lot of lives from Scripture, if you look at it like yep. Moses, mm -hmm. Jesus, Joseph, you, you could just see this attack on their lives. Um, it's almost like he knows something's coming. I got to stop. You may not know everything, but yep. he sees those in the spirit world, like you said. Exactly. He's been around long enough to know, hey, there's something here. There's something on this boy. There's something on this girl. And we got to take them out now before it manifests. And now, even right now, there are young people. And, and, and they're, they're sitting and they're listening to this. And they're going, wait a minute. Is that me? Is that why I'm going through that? Do not dismiss that voice. Wow. Because I was taught by my foster care dad. I looked at him one day and I says, I hear preachers all the time say, God said to me, how do you know God's speaking to you? Wow. I've never had that happen. And he looked at me and he goes, you read your Bible, you study the word of God. Yeah. He goes, it'll be a common point to where his thoughts are your thoughts for yourself. Wow. So you're literally hearing the voice of God like you saying, man, I need to give in this offering. Yeah. Man, I should sacrifice. I should not do that. And I should just, I should hold off on these shoes for a couple of months and give to this project at the church. Wow. That is his voice. Cause if he's going to, and I said, how do I know it's God? He goes, if it's going to help someone, if it's going to build a church, if it's going to give someone hope and love in Jesus Christ, that ain't you. Cause you were born to be selfish. You were born to be immature. Wow. And you were born to mess up. Wow. So those voices that are going to give love, hope, peace, and joy, that's God. And you're close enough that his voice is yours wow. and you need to work on it. Wow. You need to act on it. Wow. Don't even think twice. So if you're there and you're like, well, maybe that's me. Oh, no, ain't no maybe. It's you. Man. It's okay. You. So let's go to 13 years old. Yeah. And Oh, this is, this is the one. This is, in, in public schools, I'm not able to say Jesus. Yes. So in public schools, I tell my story. When I get to this point, this is the moment where everything changes in a school gym, auditorium. I could be with the biggest schools I've done are six, 7,000 kids. Wow. The smallest are 20, 15 kids. I don't care. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's not how many's in the room. It's who's in the room. Wow. And so when I look at them and I go, I was 13, I started crying. The voice in my head said, take your life. And I started thinking about giving up on the gift of life. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, all I thought right then was I'm going to die. And that's when it happened. My bedroom door opened. The kids look at me like, wait a minute. And I was like, and I was walked in was my foster care dad. His name's Bill, school janitor till the day he died. He walked in and he said, are you all right? I heard you crying. And I was like, your room's on the other end of the house. How could you hear me cry? And he said, every day you hug your mom, but for the past two days you haven't. He said, every day you talk to me for two days, not one story. And you've been so sad. So last night and tonight after your mom fell, went to bed, I grabbed a pillow. And for two nights I slept by your door. Oh, and this man. morning I heard you cry. What's wrong? And he told me, he says, I'll never call you Reggie. I'll always call you son. And I'll love you to the day I die. Fast forward. He has a brain aneurysm. 
and it ruptures while I'm on tour in Australia with, with Russell. And I'm, I'm, I was done with the tour. I was coming home, and they, they, they called, and they put the phone by his ear, and he said, I just want to thank you because he gave me his name. My name is Reggie Dabbs, D-A-B-B-S, the son of Bill Dabbs, Leela Dabbs, a school teacher. I was like, Dab. Oh, yeah. everybody, everybody. <laughs> kids do that all yeah, the time. Yeah. They introduce me to school as kids are like, hey. Yeah. hey. But here's the deal. The deal is this. God knew who needed to be my father. Wow. God knew my dad wouldn't sleep by my door, but a janitor would. Wow. And then God knew that he would walk in my room and lead me to Christ. Wow. And that's how all this started. Man, Reggie. I know it's not. It's just the dumbest story in the world, but it's mine. Well, it's God and God takes nasty, messed up stuff. My mom was evicted from her house on a Wednesday. Her husband left on Monday, cleaned out the bank account because he knew it was going to happen. So my mom, my brother and my two sisters lived on an abandoned farm in a chicken coop. They had to stay there a week, but she ran out of food in three days. Ended up sleeping with a stranger who said, I'll give you 20 bucks and your kids can eat if you sleep with me. I'm the result of the $20 bill. But I guarantee you, I just paid my taxes. I'm worth more than $20 because of Jesus. You can't change it. I know who I am. I know what I'm worth, but I know what Jesus can do. And if he mm. could do it for me, he could do it for anybody listening to this today. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. God's good, isn't he? Mm. Then I, and I said it this morning, and I say it almost every time. Why would he die for me? My own mom didn't want me. I had nobody. I don't even know. I don't know who my dad is. I can't. My, my dad paid money to sleep with someone. So what am I supposed to do? Yeah. I need to do it. The Bible says, even when your mother and father forsake you, I will have you, says the Lord. The janitor told me, God, he said, God wrote this for you. He wrote it thousands of years ago because he knew I would quote it for you today. So... He has a brain aneurysm yeah. on tour. Tell me about that. I w well, I was in Australia on tour. He was at home, and he just had a brain aneurysm. And, and when he called me, it was the coolest call, it's the coolest call ever in my yeah. history of my life because they put the phone by his ear because the doctor knew I wasn't going to make it. I wasn't going to get there. And that's cool because yeah. to be absent from the body is to be present yeah. with the Lord. I knew so that. He, I he went to be with the Lord. Oh, come on. That's, and it, we'll see, I'll see him again. And then what about your mom? Now, my mom, dad, we're going to get my mom. That's a story that I've never, I've never preached because it's pretty fresh. But today I'll, I'll let it out for you before we get done. So okay. let me finish my dad. So my dad calls me. They put the phone by his ear. And, and, I, and he said, I just want to say thank you. I said, for what? And he goes, taking my name. Oh, man. And I said, no, thank you. He said, for what? I said, sleeping by my door. And he went, you remember that? And I told him, it saved, it saved my life. Wow. All I needed was one person to believe in me, just one person. You know, Reggie, you, you, our ministry is built on something that you carry. That's why I knew you would do so good here. Um, well, uh, yeah. So it's like an old song, I think. And... Uh, you know, somebody that went through something like you, um, in, in why you do what you do. It says, "I, I want to spend my life, Lord, mending broken people." No, oh. yeah. You know, I want to spend my life, and I think that that's what's on your life, and it's because of what you went through. Yeah. You didn't choose it. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for it, but. I wouldn't change it. No. Because what the devil meant for your evil, many people, many lives are being saved through it today. Can we take a moment about, talk about that and maybe somebody that's feeling maybe, I don't know, at the end of the rope or they feel like, what's my purpose? I say yeah. your purpose is to help people. Simple. That's why, that's like the whole purpose of our ministry. It's not, we're, it's, and once you give your life to Jesus, that's your whole purpose until yeah. you see him face to face, no matter what job you have. Yeah. But that's that's who we are. It's what we do. 
uh, in, a, in a public school setting, when I talk about my foster care dad coming in my bedroom, yeah. then I look at kids and I go, y'all don't understand. The whole time I've been speaking, you, I'm sitting by your door. Wow. And since I'm here, I just came to tell you, I love you. Wow. And, you know, the toughest schools from, oh, man, the toughest schools where kids are just straight up thugs. When I do that, nobody, I've never been laughed at. I've never been mocked. And from then on, literally the roughest kid in the room will go, I respect you. Yeah, because respect that. you can't fight love. Never. Martin Luther King said it. You know what happened to me, too? When we started the church, I didn't want to pastor. I think I was scared to do it, to be honest. And because, you know, who wants to go? Th- like I see my pastor get rejected by people that he helped. He, like, helped these people, and they turned around and attacked him. He's a poor guy. I felt like, I ain't doing that. That's crazy. I'll, do an, I'll be an evangelist. I'll help, but I ain't doing no discipleship. and be crazy. But God put a burden. He said, I heard, I heard the cries of the people, and the people are crying, and, 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 you you are like a, a deliverer to them. Uh, listen, I like even today, uh, being able to finish the sermon, go in the back in the lobby. It was raining, so yeah. I couldn't go outside, but just shaking hands with people yeah. as they left. Um, there's one thing, one thing that I say to kids in schools. If it's a, if it's serious, I don't do it at every school, yeah. but sometimes you you know you're in the right room with the right kids who know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. and in that room, I'll look at kids and I and it and it's it's. I think it's the reason I am the way I am. I'll never forget the darkness. I know. Because it marked you. Never forget. I'll never. And I went, I, I can't let. Can't let nobody go through that. No. See, that's the thing. Whether they accept Christ or not, it doesn't matter. That's the thing. And it's it's it. That's why I don't play, Reggie. It's and it's why people. I don't play. People look at us. And go, oh, he's a great speaker. Oh, he's this. Nah, and, oh, no, no, no. I don't play. I we've been there. Yeah, because once you've been there, yeah, and you have the medicine. Uh, you have their medicine. God gave you their medicine. What was it to me if I don't preach the gospel? Hello. Yeah. There's. there's wow. No, and and you got to earn the right. Yeah. Earn the right to be heard. Man. I want to spend my life. There's a rag there. Um, okay. Mending bro. People watching this going, they both crying. What's wrong with them? Man, I never cried a day in my life. Right? You lying. I never cried until I got saved. Dude, true. <laughs> no, since it, I was dude. But you know you know what Joni told me on Daystar? I paused, I'm sorry, Joni, I, I break. She's like, that's a gift of brokenness. And it's a gift. And it is. Yeah. And, 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 uh. Never forget where we come from because people are still there. So if anyone's at the end of the rope, you got to turn to Jesus so he can change the way you see it. I, I was going to kill myself at, at 12, 13, same age. And I had the knife, everything, and I didn't do it. Thank God because I was scared. Because my aunt, um, she would play these scary Christian movies, you know, like... Oh, uh, no, uh, Left Behind? And Prodigal Planet. Oh, come on. <laughs> Dude, that's just a great... And I, and I said, no, 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 man. I, I, don't wanna, I, don't wanna, I don't I don't, I don't, I want to go to heaven. You know what I mean? So I didn't do... That's the only reason I did That is funny. But I had the knife, and I, I was... So that that was at the end of my rope. But uh, I think people are going to get hope today. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, and that makes sense. And then we'll talk about this. That makes sense why a situation... Uh, like Columbine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's, the, it's the hope in a messed up situation. There's no way a kid's going to get her through this. But no. you, you walk in the room, and, and they, I'll never forget. They looked at me, and they said, and it happens whenever there's a school shooting, uh, if I can, I'm, I'm the guy that goes. And that is not a good thing to be known for. Yeah. Because <laughs> that is the toughest thing. Kids are in counseling. Kids are going through all these. They have to because you're a ninth grader and you just went through a war situation. Stuff that they train 18, 19, 20-year-old men months to be ready and prepared for. You didn't see it coming and had to go through it. And and that's just just the most messed up thing. But I found out love conquers all. 
Man. You go in and you say, I just can't tell you. I love you. And I literally will say, I'm so sorry this happened at your school. But I love you. And, and we're going to get and, through And it. talk about being a victim. Oh. Because they didn't do anything. He just Somebody went in there just crazy for the devil and manifested. We just... That's why, and love wins every time. Okay, so because love wins, we only have six minutes left. We're going to save this story now about Reggie's mom, your mom. Yeah. And and, and, and what happened here? Because you shared a little bit of it. Yeah, to be able to go to set it up when, when my foster care mom, she was my real mom's 10th grade English teacher, all right? And, uh, and, and I now, looking back, I remember, I hear the phone calls. That where she would call and I would hear, he's great. He's doing really good. Mm. He's awesome. You need to meet him. You mm. need to talk. And I never put it together. I was like, who are they talking about? What's going on? I have five brothers, two sisters. They're all older than me. So I'm just living my life until I. everybody's doing their thing. I'm in ministry. My mom and my dad, they, before they passed away, they got to see who I was, what I did. They were so proud of me. And I looked at them and go, how did y'all know I was going to be like this? And they go, God knew. We just thought we had to help you because no one else would raise you. And I went, oh, thanks. <laughs> I wow. appreciate that. Wow. But then all of a sudden, my dad passes away. When he passes away, that a glimpse of what kind of man Bill Dabbs was, the school janitor. Yeah. His coffin is in the front of the church. They're about to let people in. My mom, I look at her. I'm preaching a sermon. And I looked at her and I said, are you ready for us to let everyone in? She goes, I am. She goes, can I ask you something? I said, absolutely, Mom. What do you need? She goes, I don't need nothing. But who's going to open the door for me now? And I hit me. She never opened a car door, a building door. If he was there, he always opened the wow. door. Wow. What a testimony. Yeah. What a testimony. A gentleman. Oh, to the end. And then... Four pastors at the funeral goes, hey, we uh, we all bought the tombstone, but it won't be delivered for a week. So I just, you know, did the funeral, left. I came back about two months later. I went to the tombstone, and it says, here lies the pastor's friend. Wow. Dude. Wow. What do you do with that? Wow. So then my mom gets On sick. the tombstone. On his tombstone. And they had plots Whoa. were side by side. Here lies the pastor's friend's. So when my mom passed away, they they said that um, at the funeral, these nurses came. And they had scrubs on because they said, this was our lunch break. They said, we were there when your mom died. And I said, what do you mean? They go, you got to hear what happened. I said, what do you mean? He says, we were working, and all of a sudden we heard a radio real loud. And it was on the Christian channel. And somebody was singing, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. We run in and realize it ain't the radio. It was your mom. She had moved her oxygen mask. And my mom could sing like Aretha Franklin. She was unbelievable. And they thought it was Aretha. And it was her. And when she got to the end, the song ends, um, uh, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches. And she flatlined. Ooh, she went. Through. So instead of saying me, she saw it. Wow. Okay, hold on, because I, I don't, I have a, I don't preach this, but you're pulling it out of me. So all of a sudden, you know, I'm like 48 when she passed away. So two years later, I'm 50. So this is 10 years ago. My cell phone rings. I pick it up and go, "Hello." This little lady goes, "Is this Reginald?" And I went, "Whoa, are you with the IRS?" Because the only people <laughs> call me Reginald. <laughs> and she goes, "No, no, no." She goes, "I was given this mother, this number." By his mom. I said, well, this is, this is Reginald. I said, how did my mom give you this number? And she goes, I was given this number by your mom the day before she died. I said, lady, who are you? And she goes, I'm your mom. Oh, my God. She goes, my name is Vera. And, dude, all of a sudden, and she goes, can I see you? You're in my town. I saw it on the news. So I literally, 9 o'clock at night after I got done doing an event, Drove to a little house, walked up, knocked on the door, and this little bitty lady opened the door, just crying, going, I should have never let you go. And that was my mom. And I held her, and I said, you had to. Otherwise, I wouldn't be the man that I am today. Wow. Now, at 13, when I gave my life to Jesus, he knew years later I would be the healing for my mom. 
Wow. I know it's so and 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 she she has dementia. She she calls four times a day. I act like it's the first time she called. My my brother, he's asked me, you want me to block her number? I said, no. And he goes, well, why she call you and not me? I said, because she raised you. I'm the mistake. <laughs> He's crazy. God's good, brother. Dude, I know. Hey, you can never have a bad day in the rest of the rest of your life. No, you, not at all. You're not allowed to. I might have a couple of hurdles, but yeah. hey, I'll crawl but, under. But at the end of the day, you got to just go back. Oh, just go back and go look where we are. Man, look how far the that's Lord a weapon too. Oh, it is. All right, devil, you want to hear me? Let me show you. Boom. Yeah. Man. You know, and my my mom, I asked her, you know, I asked her, I said, when she gave you the number, what did she say? She goes, I, she goes, she looked at me and goes, I know I'm dying, but there's one thing I got to do before I go here. This is his number. You have no idea who he is. You've got to call him someday. She said, do not leave this planet without meeting your son. And it took her two years, but she called. Okay, you gotta so you know pray. What? We're gonna we have to pray. We're out We're of time. We're gonna pray. God restores it all. Okay, let's pray. We have twenty restores seconds. Restores it all. You pray. No, you're gonna pray. Okay, I'll pray because it's on. It you're gonna pray, Reggie. All right, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for my friend Jason. I thank you for this church. I thank you for this podcast. But God, most of all, I thank you for someone who's watching this, and they need to start having the faith that you will put the pieces of their broken life back together again. God, let them let go of the pieces and let you put them back together. You painted the picture from beginning to end. And sometimes we're so close, we can't see what the end picture is. That's why we have to let go and let the master take his work. So Jesus, we're letting go and we're letting you put the pieces of our life back together. And when we see you face to face, we'll say, Thank God I believe. Thank God I had faith. Thank God I trusted Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close this out, Reggie. Thank you for everything. Absolutely. And this is not going to be definitely your last time. This is only your first hold time. You to, oh, plus your mom said I can come back. Yeah, you'll be back for sure. Amen. Let me know if you want Reggie back. Blow, blow up. Just put a bunch of hearts. Come on, somebody. <laughs> uh, again, thank you so much for all the partners. Um, uh, and, and, and it just it's a blessing that we can put programming like this out. Make sure you subscribe uh, for our, our weekly email and hit on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And let my people book. It's available uh, in audio in Spanish, so it's on all the platforms. Thank you so much. Go on the website, get all the gifts, partners. This month, you're gonna. This is yours. We're gonna send this PDF. It's it's all full of the Word of God teaching to build your faith up. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And again, to every Pharaoh in your life, we come to tell him his time is up. It's time to let my people go. Love you. See you soon.